believe the couple had already separated. A lot to deal with here. We'll take your calls, comments, 1-877-TELL-HLN is the number. Join me to talk about this. Co-host, Showbiz Tonight, Brooke Anderson, right here on HLN. Also with us, Dr. Carol Lieberman, psychiatrist and author. And joining us as well, family law attorney Vicki Ziegler. She's an author of the book, Premarital Survival Guide. Well, Brooke, let's, let's get to the new lead on this story. We were just beginning to sift through this alleged affair, and now we've got overdose linked to Fantasia. What do we know? Absolutely. Well, her manager did confirm that she overdosed um, on the same day that she read this wife's complaint and she read the allegations against Fantasia Barino. And I've been reading through these divorce documents and these allegations. And Mike, this woman did not hold back. She specifically lists times that she believes her husband was with Fantasia. She portrays Fantasia um, as a mean and spiteful person. At one point, she says that Fantasia told the wife he quote he don't want you maybe the next time that you get a husband you'll know how to keep him that's why he is here with me um so mike this could be bad for fantasia personally and professionally yet her manager does say that she felt misled by this man that he mm. told her he was separated mm. when they got together yeah and the, the, the what you read was what we gather from court documents was a phone call right Brooke from Fantasia uh, yes, to this Antoine yes. Cook's wife uh, man that is startling so much here Dr. Lieberman what do you make of this we have again uh, we're hearing about this alleged affair now the word of an overdose well, yes, there are, you know, there are a number of things that could have contributed to this. Obviously, it is related to all of this coming out in the media. Um, you know, the idea that, that she didn't know that he was still with the wife, I mean, you know, that's just not true. It's interesting that um, I, I think that possibly what could be contributing to this is that she's realizing that this man who she thought was madly in love with her, or she hoped was madly in love with her, might well be having second thoughts now that the wife has written these divorce papers and that she's asking for custody of the two children, she's asking for all their property and so right. on. And he might really be having second thoughts now that he's enjoyed, you know, having all the glamorous life with Fantasia. You know, uh, Brooke, as we, let, let's get the affair portion of this out here. Again, that's where we started the day, uh, kind of detailing things. This is according to the wife that her husband, who works at a cell phone store, met Fantasia. They exchanged numbers. And that's where it all began, right? This 11-month affair. What happened next? What other details do we know? Uh, right. Th this woman claims in these papers that Fantasia wined and dined him, that he traveled with her, that he was on set with her for photo shoots, production responsibilities, that sort of thing, that he was living the life of a celebrity, really, and, and that he would lie to her when he said he, he was doing work-related activities. But she claims that instead he was seeing Fantasia Barino. Um, and, and interesting to point out, this wife also contends that um, Fantasia and her husband quote have at times recorded their illicit sexual activity but Mike uh, in none of the statements we have received from Fantasia's manager does he mention any sort of sex tape so there is no denial mm -hmm. about a sex tape at this point okay one uh, reaction we had from uh, Fantasia's manager saying Fantasia is certain she is not responsible for the deterioration of the cook's marriage Vicki though I mean you get these details uh, and if uh, we're believing the wife here we're talking about a photo that we showed of them holding hands an alleged sex tape thinking that it's advantage wife right now in a court of law Oh, yeah, Mike, the complaint is ugly. Usually we uh, allege marital misconduct, maybe in a page or two. There are pages and pages, and you heard Brooke read some of the allegations. They go to double E. That's from A to Z and then double E. They are laying a foundation for an alienation of affection claim, and certainly Fantasia's manager has come out and denied it because that's the only defense she has to say, listen, they had a bad marriage from the get-go, and I wasn't the contributing factor. It's not why it ended. He wasn't in love with her, and of course, she's going to say that through her manager but this looks like she could be on the hook for millions and wow. millions of dollars she messed with the wrong guy in North Carolina and it could get really ugly for her so all she's worked for this rags to riches story that is Fantasia yes. she could lose it all uh, because she can't plead ignorance in other words hey he told me they were done that's not a, a, a uh, defense in an alienation of yes, a that, case Vicki go ahead real I quick think that that's yeah no, well, go ahead. Let, let's let Vicki go she's she, 
Yeah, that's not going to be her defense. The real uh, crux of this um, argument is that she's going to say that I was not the one that actually brought down the marriage. Uh, it wasn't my fault. And if you can't br blame her and prove fault that she maliciously um, condoned the breakdown of the marriage, then she may have a fighting chance. But it's going to be very difficult. I mean, the father wasn't around from the allegations. The child now has problems in school. He was lying to the wife, and, and he's been traveling with her to fancy locations. There's pictures. I mean, Fantasia has his tattoo, his name on her body. Wow. That's going to be the evidence. That state's evidence number one. So she's got a major problem on her hands. Carol, you wanted to make a point? Go ahead. Well, yes, that, you know, I think that that's one of the things that's also gotten her distraught because we know about how she struggled, you know, during her childhood get, to get over uh, all of these poverty issues and so on. And now that she's threatened, really, between the wife suing for alienation of affection and between her fans, you know, being totally disillusioned. Here's a woman who, who had this sad story that she overcome all of this and who believes in God and brings out her spirituality every time she can. And this is what a woman who you know is, is supposedly so spiritual and believes in God does not really so she's really at risk of losing her fans okay. as well we're gonna take a break we're gonna take your calls chime in on this one one eight seven seven tell HLN is the number we talked about the alienation of affection that lawsuit has not been filed but it's there on the table it can happen in North Carolina A lot of news surrounding American Idol winner Fan Investment management for 60 years. Franklin Templeton Investments. Gain from our perspective. Welcome back to Prime News on HLN. A lot of news surrounding American Idol winner Fantasia Porino. Late word. Uh, her name linked with the possible overdose. We've uh, been talking about that. That has been confirmed. She's recovering from that. All the while, as we find out that in court documents, she's alleged to have ripped up a marriage. Broke it up. Antoine Cook is the man in question here. We're taking your calls. one eight seven seven tell hln Heather's with us, North Carolina. Hey, Heather, your thoughts? Um, hi. I just wanted to say that I support the wife in this situation all the way. I've been the wife um, as a resident of North Carolina a few years ago. I divorced my husband. I um, sued the paramour and settled out of court. So I um, am with the wife um, all the way. All right. So you went through this alienation of affection. Uh, Vicki, how successful are these kind of court cases? We know North Carolina is one of the states where you can sue. How successful are uh, jilted wives and husbands? They're quite successful. The most recent and most famous case, a uh, woman received $9 million. Yes, $9 million from the mistress. So there are real viable claims in North Carolina. And, you know, the, the problem is it shifts from the individual, the Mr. Cook here, the husband, to Fantasia. And I think it takes two to tango, yeah, right. as they say. No, let's not You know, it really him. does. He's got two kids, no, two absolutely. sons, a two-year-old and a six-year-old. Uh, come on here. Let, let's get a call in another one. Beverly, Canada. Beverly, go ahead. Hi, Beverly. I'm, I'm this is Beverly. I'm so excited to get on your show. Hey, all right, Beverly. But listen, I want to tell you that I do not believe that Fantasia should be attacked the way she is. The man that got involved with her, he was the one that had the vows. He is the one that's committing the act of adultery. And I just feel that Fantasia hmm. is being used in the media to almost ruin her life and her career and how do we know mike that that gentleman that was with her didn't plan the whole thing so that well beverly, he, could, he could have this money you make a good point beverly because we're and brooke help me out here that's what we're finding out that fantasia's stories basically this guy duped her right saying the marriage yeah, was yeah, over uh, we're, absolutely uh, we're good to go because this marriage is just about done right According to her manager, yeah, she says, um, Fantasia says she believed him when he told her that he was separated. She believed him when he told her that he lived elsewhere, not in the family home, and that he even took her there at one point. Um, and Fantasia thought one of his most redeeming qualities was he was devoted to his children and that she fell in love with him and she thought 
he loved her back. And to our caller's point there, how horrible would it be? I mean, the whole thing is terrible and horrific, but right. how horrible would it be if this guy, Antoine Cook, planned this whole thing out in order to eventually sue Fantasia to get millions of dollars? That would seriously be twisted. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Carol Lieberman, you're, you have a new book yes. coming out, right, uh, Carol, called Bad Girls, Why yes. Men Love Them and How Good Girls Can Learn Their Secrets. How does that fit into all this? Yes, and actually Fantasia is in this book, which is going to be coming out this fall, under the category Husband Stealer. Ooh. Now, yes, and, and the reason why women become husband stealers actually has to do with their childhood when um, they felt as though their mother had more of a tie, more at t attention and love from their father than they did. And so they're feeling entitled to taking a man from his wife because they didn't get her father. And what's interesting is um, that when Fantasia was five, she writes about this in her biography, that when she was five, her parents used to sing uh, this song, Inseparable. That was the first time she actually got on the stage. They brought her mm. on to sing. And they were, at that time, um, inseparable and and she felt that love and she was jealous of it not to again uh, excuse her part in this but that is why she feels entitled to taking a man away from his mm. wife okay now certainly though he um, I mean you know no man who commits adultery obviously no. is it's not all her fault it's not all right. Fantasia's fault he does play a role in let's, yes yeah let's that not is absolve possible him. that he Let's not that is possible that he planned Carol, this out. we, we got to run. I hate, I hate to cut you off sure. here. Uh, but thanks again, Carol, Vicki, Brooke. Uh, we'll keep following this one, uh, as always. Coming up this, another story we keep an eye on, suspicion.